Well, it's square peg. Out of my 2019 or 2021 Appalachian Trail through hike. And this is what it's like to come from, you know, to be on an alpine zone on the Appalachian Trail. Small, delicate plants. And you see these little pine trees up here? And you think they're like little baby pine trees. But actually, these pine trees up here in the Alpine Zone have a lot in common with the um, bonsai trees. They're actually like bonsais because they have such a thin layer of soil and not a lot of nutrients. They grow very slowly. And with the wind and stuff up here, it keeps them stunted with their growth due to lack of nutrients. So if you were to look at one of these trees and um, after it dies and I cut it down, the, the um, trunk, you'll see hundreds of rings in these tiny little trees because they've been up here for hundreds of years. And it's amazing that something so small could be so old, you know, as far as a tree is concerned. If these were redwoods, this mountain would be covered with giants. Thousands, maybe thousands of feet tall, but of trees of similar age, or hundreds of feet tall, maybe not thousands. That would be crazy. And one of the things you do gotta do when you're going up is just occasionally Take a look around, so you're not missing all the view. And it's easy to do. You'll be going up and just tediously shuffling along and missing fantastic views. So you're just gonna stop and look around. All those tall mountains are what I've come over. That tallest one is probably Mount Washington right there, straight ahead in the background. So much clouds between here and there valleys are just loaded with them. Last night was quite a shock. We heard this like loud wind blow through and then the rain just hit the shelter like a hammer. A whole wall of it. It came through and it was just like torrential downpour instantly. And we're here at the top of Mount Moose Lock at the Beaver Run Shelter and there's lightning going off like crazy and we're sitting here with a metal roof above us and we're all like scared crapless <laughs> the shelter's gonna be hit luckily the trees around it were taller so we survived the night and yeah it was just one crazy night it wasn't a long storm but it was so intense and like everybody all around just like was awake instantly running around grabbing stuff from outside It's so nice to have views from up here. So many times I come over this and it's been completely socked in. You know, and um, it's nice to have good views today. It's good to be able to share that with you. Walk with me just a little bit further and we'll get to the summit of this. This probably isn't the main summit, but one of the shoulders. So we'll at least get a panoramic view from up here. <clears throat> I'm really enjoying the class of 2021. So far there hasn't been a lot of trash. They're being very responsible with LNT. And um, very, as a whole, very courteous and respectful group. It's gonna be, it's a very good class from what I've seen so far going southbound. And today is Thursday the 12th of August. And I've been out almost two months. And my legs are straining for some flat grain, flat land to um, stretching my legs. You're on the Beaverbrook Trail North on the Appalachian Trail. And the breeze is so cool out right now. Usually when I come over here, it's like in September, mid to late September, and it's so cold. Yet, Today is such a beautiful day. It's nice and cool, probably in the 60s. 
it's finally warmed up for so long it was like 50s and 60s during the day now it's finally getting where we're having like 70s during the day who that feels hot after the cold temperatures but for the most part we still have a good tunnel over top for a lot of the areas keeping us in the shade so we we don't swelter too much but that heat index and humidity can get things really hot A couple days ago I came down I believe to the Franconia Notch after the coming over Lafayette Traverse go to ride to the Hikers Welcome Hostel uh, I was about dead that night I had to do the last um, four miles down from the the um, Laurel Springs campsite coming down to the parking lot in an hour and that's like a crazy downhill over the boulders kind of thing and I did make it down in an hour, but the shuttle had already left. And luckily, I called them up and they called, They were able to catch service before he got to the mountains, which is a pretty near a miracle. And he turned around and I had a lady and she was giving me, gonna give me a ride because we thought that there was no chance we were gonna get service to them. So she, she pulled me to the end of the driveway out onto the highway when the van was pulling in and I mean, it just worked out so I was able to get a ride over there and back in the morning the Hikers Welcome host Hostel is such a great place and the people there are amazing give another little panoramic look around Still some good views. we're above the clouds over there you can just see the clouds These cairns help people find their way in the snow. You think, well, the snow would just come in and bury the cairns. But no, the snow cairn keeps its shape. So if there's five feet of snow up here, unless it gets snow drifts and buried, but if it's just straight falling down snow, there'll be a, a shape exactly pretty much that size sticking up above the snow, marking where a cairn is. And that looks like the summit right there. So you got to walk with me from the tree line to the summit. And it looks like there's a bunch of hikers up there, ready? That would be a good panoramic view up there. trying to keep this as steady as possible so I don't make you seasick. Little area to get in out of the, the wind. 